Welcome to Kochi City in Kochi Prefecture. This market that we're on right now is the oldest outdoor market in Japan, over 300 years old. There's lots of things to buy, but there's also a lot of things to eat. And to help me out with this report is Kiara, who's been living in Japan for 10 years. Yeah, I have. I'm the author of the Tokyo Vegan Guide, and I help visitors find awesome vegan food all around Japan. Great, so we'll get a chance to eat a lot of different kinds of foods. Mm -hmm. Kochi is very famous for its vegetables. Yep, and its wonderful fruit um, and some other dishes and that we can check out at the market here, which are really awesome. Is there anything else you can tell us about the market? Well, it's uh, also really long. It's about a kilometer of wonderful little stalls, and it's really local. So there's um, sort of little old ladies from the countryside who come to sell their produce that they grew in their own gardens, and that is kind of one of the parts I really love about it. Any market with street food is going to be a lot of fun to visit, especially one steeped in history and tradition, with Kochi Castle looking over it all. We'll end the episode up there. Kochi Sunday Market is long, with hundreds of local vendors coming in from the countryside to sell all sorts of things in the prefectural capital. It's famous for produce and having vegan and vegetarian options. This market is so long. Yeah. Did you see anything in particular that you liked? Oh yeah. So why don't we split up so we can cover more ground? Okay. The first thing that I had to try was at this stand, which may be the most famous in the market. It's homemade, right out of the fryer, tempura sweet potato. The satsuma imo potatoes are peeled and cut, battered and deep fried. When they're golden brown, they'll sit to allow the oil to filter through and cool a bit. Then wait and put into bags to be sold right away to waiting customers. They're here almost every Sunday and yes, they have a lot of regular customers. Many, many. <laughs> That just melted in with the dough around it. And that dough is, it gives it like a mochi mochi consistency, really springy. So when you bite into it, it's like biting into a little bit of mochi. And then you have the sweet potato with the natural sugars. Ah. The natural sweetness goes a long way. Crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Just can't be healthy. And yet it's so right. Are you sure you don't want one? Not vegan friendly. It's John friendly. <laughs> Well, we'll find something for vegans next. The market has hundreds of options. Like these tomatoes. They look perfect and you can even smell the sweet acidic tomato aroma from the stand. The mini tomatoes here come wrapped like royalty. About $40 a box. Probably a lot more in Tokyo. Kiara walked up to a stand selling them on ice to eat on hot days like this. So these are two different types of kochi tomatoes. This one is a sweeter version. This one has like a really, really deep flavor. And they're kept nice and iced, so they're perfect on a hot day. Let's see. <laughs> the eater and tomato bonding for what seemed like minutes rather than seconds. Then we got a response. Oh my god. Oh, the tomato and I are definitely having a moment here. Mm. Kochi's tomatoes are quite famous in summer, and be sure to try different varieties when you're here. Mm. Shada shifted to another usual vegetarian-friendly street food here, Inaka Sushi. 
but is it vegan? This one was not vegan friendly. It had egg and dashi. So this here is inakazushi, which is countryside style sushi. And it's called that because it doesn't use any fish. There's lots of different vegetables and some tofu in there. So on the surface, it looks vegan. But before buying it, you have to ask, dashi haitte ka? Which means, is there fish broth in it? But we still need to feed Kiara. It's not easy being vegan in Japan. You definitely have to ask about everything. This seller's goods were not vegan friendly. But on another day, I did find one that didn't add any dashi. All the vegetables are fresh with just a little soy sauce. A little sesame and the rice for flavor. But for someone who loves the usual sushi, I have to ask. But can vegan sushi be good? The answer is yes. The flavor of the vegetables can be as good as the fish. This one is myoga. It's kind of like a ginger. But it's got a really beautiful red color to it. Some of the more popular inakazushi is sold out by 10.30 in the morning. Get it while it's fresh. Baked goods are well represented at Kochi's Sunday Market. Bakers from around the area bring their haul to their stands, but one local specialty really grabbed my attention. That UFO-looking bread is called the boshipan, or hat bread, and it really does look like a hat. I hear custard, and I hand over cash immediately. This has got to be one of the most interesting bakery, baked good items that I've ever seen in my life. This is called boshipan, or the hat bread of Kochi. And you can see it really does look like a hat. I guess it only comes in one size. This style more like the 18th century tricorn. It tastes like baked custard, delicious. I've always wanted to eat my hat. Would go great with hot tea or coffee. It's only found in Kochi Prefecture, in every bakery, supermarket, and convenience store. Chiara is back and found a good one. This is azuki red beans and mochi covered in kinako, roasted soybean powder. It's only 70 yen or about 70 cents for one. How does it taste? Mm. Oh, it's super soft. Mm. You can tell it's homemade mochi. Mm. And there's the kinako. The soybean powder on the outside is also nice and sweet and kind of adds this flowery texture, which makes a nice balance with the soft mochi. Careful with that kinako powder. It can get on everything. Mmm. Yum. It's so good. The azuki red beans give a subtle sweetness. It's heavy, and one could fill you up or provide a happy ending to a meal as a dessert. This is not limited to vegans only. It's great to be able to food surf in multiple dietary worlds. Kochi's Sunday market history goes back to the Edo period. The market has always sold everyday items and food directly from the producers and farmers. This is what it was like during the Meiji era. During World War II, Kochi was bombed heavily and little remained. But the market roared back.
Even now, in the digital 21st century, despite being able to order things online and send it to your door, this market is thriving. I talked with Noda-san, who is managing the market for the city. え、what keeps the market going for so long, and how does the future look? It all starts before 5 a.m. every Sunday. Before the sun breaks, there are already several farmers setting up for the market. Most vendors seem to be senior citizens, some in their 90s. They work hard like this every day, and Sunday is an important day. Not just to sell their goods, but to socialize with other people and see old friends. The street is closed down on one side to keep people from having to cross the street often. The other city streets are still completely deserted on Sunday morning. Almost all of the vendors here are family run, and you can feel that friendly vibe that comes from people who have done this all of their lives. When the sun crests the trees, let the selling begin. Some sellers have been here so long they've forgotten when they started. <laughs> Sellers bring goods that they grow or make themselves. They love coming here and customers come back for that good feeling. The market may be a good reason to travel to Kochi. Kochi is Japan's citrus fruit kingdom. In season now is this, the buntan, a massive citrus fruit that's a nice balance between sweet and bitter. Kiara loves these. Yuzu is also another Japanese citrus fruit well known in Kochi, and off season you can find it in lemonade type drinks known as Yuzu Aid. <laughs> Kiara chills out with a big cup of it. So, when you hear about Kochi in Japan, you often hear about Yuzu, which is a small citrus fruit. And this here is a yuzu drink. It's just fresh water, uh, yuzu, and a little bit of the sugar. So if you come to Kochi, you absolutely have to try these. They're one of the local specialties. Yuzu aid is quite popular in the summer. You can spend several hours here wandering the streets and talking to people. Uh, and eating your way from start to finish. They also have all sorts of vegetable chips. 
Yep, they're vegan friendly too. It's been a long day. Before going, you have to walk up to Kochi Castle. Wow, that was quite a day. Yeah, that was great fun. Yeah, this behind us is Coach Castle. There's a lot of walking and a lot of eating. What was your favorite? I think the imomochi, that was really something special. That did look good. I like that inakazushi. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty cool that the, that the take, the, t the bamboo looked like egg, but I also liked it because you couldn't eat it. <laughs> oh, so you get to eat all the food I can. <laughs> I got to eat a little bit more than you. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't things for people that are, have vegan diets. Of course, yeah. And we showed a bunch of them today, but there's also a lot more. Right. So every Sunday they have different things. Yep. The vendors change every week, and that's part of the fun, I think. Yeah. I guess every season has different ingredients. Yuzu, which is very famous here in Kochi, was not here because it's not in season, but usually mm -hmm. it's... Uh, like a staple of the market. Yep, yep, and then the bontan we saw today too, those are in season right now. So it just kind of, it's very seasonal, which is nice, you know, in touch with nature, I think. Yeah, so if you come here, definitely check out the oldest and the longest morning market in Japan. You won't be sorry, and you won't go home hungry.